Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. I am so happy that you are listening today. I am a registered holistic nutritionist and self-proclaimed biohacker, content creator, podcaster, and I'm also doing a course right now specializing in functional medicine for women's health. So this is a place where I kind of talk about all those types of things, lots of health wellness topics, and I am moving towards Fridays being my days that are focused on women's health. And Tuesdays are days that are focused on all sorts of other things in the health world. So look out for specialized episodes coming out on Fridays that are all about all types of things, honestly, for women like estrogen dominance. I just got a question about a couple days ago, PCOS, preconception health, fertility, menopause. Last week on Friday, I talked about vaginal steaming. So it really, there's really a lot that I can talk about in that space. And I just wanted to create a place where women's health was really the focus because that is what intrigues me the most. And I don't, yeah, I just want to have more conversations about it and give more resources to all of the women and females out there listening. So stay tuned for that. If you want to enter my new giveaway, you can do that. I am giving away free consultations with me. These are free women's health consultations for an hour and you can enter. It's live on my website right now. You can go and take a look and there's going to be a new winner every other week. So this has been really fun to put together. I, yeah, I just want to work with women and I think it's important to be able to give back as well. So there's also that aspect and I just want to, yeah, kind of understand the problems that a lot of women are facing, you know, health-wise can really, really be a bunch of different things. So this is one of the opportunities that I have to do that. And you get to win. So you get to sit down and have a call with me for an hour. You can ask me anything and I will follow up with you and give you a bunch of resources afterwards and recipes and recommendations and what I think you should do if you're facing maybe you're trying to conceive and it's not working and stuff like that. So that is what I am doing. That's going to run for the next few months. I have no plans to turn that off anytime soon. So please enter and definitely give that a go. If you are interested in women's health or you're struggling or somebody who is, I got a bunch of DMs from the dudes in the biohacker space saying, oh, I'm going to enter my wife. So that's okay too. You know, like that's, that's kind of the point. So happy, super happy about that. This podcast episode was really fun. I got to sit down with Megan and really just talk about so many different things. We talked about nutrition and stress, running your own business, success metrics. We talked about reframing, how to avoid burnout. We talked about micronutrients and macronutrients And we really did talk about a lot for this one. And it was so easy. Megan is so great. And if you want to work with Megan, she definitely has an online practice and you can work with her. And it's linked in my show notes and you can go and find that right now. And it's also on my website. I'm redoing my website as well. So I'm excited for that to come out. So bear with me right now with my current website. It's very 2021. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's not very modern in my e-commerce brain, in my software development brain that I have, but that's okay. I'm working on it. So enjoy this podcast episode. A shout out to AG1. Oh my gosh. You know what's funny? The amount of people who have talked to me about AG1 in the last two weeks is astonishing. So literally today, like I'm not even lying, my little brother who is 20 six, I think sends me a message and he's like, yeah, I started AG one two weeks ago and I've been taking it every day. And I like actually feel a difference in my energy. And I was like, you're on AG one as well. He lives in Chicago. I was like, what? Everyone, everyone I know talks to me about AG one. I swear like their reach is substantial. So I applauded him and it makes sense. AG1 is something that has all of the vitamins 
nutrients, minerals, everything in one place, like in one place. So it really makes it easy for a lot of people, especially for people who don't like to take supplements or don't take a lot of supplements. And that's exactly my little brother. This is likely the only thing that he is taking. I don't think he would ever take anything else. And so it makes sense. And I'm just, yeah, I'm happy to see how well it's growing because I think we need more of that. You can use my discount code biohackingbrittany and you will get a free bottle of vitamin D3 and K2 to go along with your purchase. And vitamin D is very important, especially as we head into winter. So this is actually the vitamin D supplement I'm taking right now. I take between 5,000 to 10,000 I use a day and more closer to 10,000 in the winter because I'm in Pacific North Northwest baby and like I don't see the sun. I don't see the sun. I see cloud. I see rain daily. So it's really important for me to take it. And I think a lot of people are also deficient in vitamin D. And a shout out to Prolon. I love working with Prolon. I had such an interesting experience doing their fast, their five-day fast. And then I followed up with continuing with their fasting bars and the fasting shakes as well. So what I like about this is like, like I've said before, if you want to get the benefits of fasting, but you don't want to fully not fast at all, and you don't want to, sorry, (laughs) cut out all food, that makes more sense. Then this is something that you can do. It limits it, limits you to about like 800 calories a day. And then you get the benefits and then they have products to support you afterwards. So like the bars and the shakes and for all my Canadian listeners, the bars are coming to Canada in January. I got asked that. So I reached out to Perlon and it's coming. So don't you worry. I'll hook you up. Use my discount. Don't pay full price. Okay. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I use my discount. And also if you ever, I get this a lot. I have people who DM me about random brands, wellness and biohacking brands. There's a chance that I have a discount for them. Like actually. So like last week I had a woman reach out. She's like, I really want to get one skin. I know that's what you use. I think you talked about them a while ago. Do you still have a discount code? And I was like, yeah, girl, I do. Here you go. Biohacking Brittany, all capitals. So chances are I do have discounts. So just ask me for them on Instagram if you need it and enjoy this podcast episode. This was a lot of fun and I will catch you on Friday for one that is all about women's health and supporting women throughout their journey. And I will also catch you next week, Tuesdays and Fridays, podcasts every day. Okay. Have a good one. Welcome to biohacking with Brittany. Thank you for tuning in this week to another episode. This episode is going to be a fun one. We have another nutritionist on the podcast. This is Megan Lyons, and she's actually a former economics and consulting professional who transformed her life into a thriving career in the health and wellness space, which we are definitely going to get into. We're also going to talk about her insights on vital health factors, nutrition, stress management, morning routines, which I know everybody loves hearing about morning routines and a lot more. So Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brittany. I'm really excited to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said in the beginning, I am so curious how you went from economics to health and wellness expert, like what a (laughs) change in career. So what inspired that shift for you? Well, it really was a change in career, but at the same time, looking back to me, it feels very fluid. It feels like Hindsight is twenty twenty, and I learned something from every stage in my career. I wound up studying economics basically because I looked at my dad, who has always been one of my biggest role models, and he was in business. I didn't really know exactly what that meant, but I knew that my undergraduate did not have a business major. They had economics, and that was sounded pretty close to me. So I chose economics as a major. I loved economics. I actually found it super fascinating. I love diving into research of anything. And I just truly love learning. I'm one of those super nerds that will never stop being in some kind of educational program. So I really enjoyed economics. I went into management consulting after that, basically, again, because it was the thing that everyone else was doing. And 
everyone else kind of wanted that job. So I was like, sure, maybe I want it too. And it was great. I didn't have a crisis like, oh, I hate my job. This is terrible. What I did have was slowly falling away from what made me feel alive from a somewhat physical perspective, but really emotional perspective too. So I was learning and I mentioned I love learning. I was around really cool, smart people. I was getting amazing opportunities, but I felt myself getting further and further away from my best health. So for those who don't know in management consulting, you're generally traveling 45 to 48 weeks a year, Monday through Thursday, And that just takes a toll on your body. You're working 80-hour weeks and you're eating in tons of restaurants. You're having lots of fancy dinners, which sounds really amazing, but those fancy dinners come with a lot of courses of appetizers and alcohol and things like that. And you're eating snack food in the corporate break room. And I just started feeling not good. I was really taxing my adrenals. My adrenals have always been at the root of my personal health issues. And so I started diving into what I could do to help heal myself without necessarily going to, you know, quitting my job and and live in an ashram or something like that, which is totally cool and sounds amazing, but just wasn't going to be my path. And once I figured it out for myself, which was still while I was consulting, then I had the bug. I was like, I have to share this with other high achievers, other people who are working these really demanding jobs and who have other passions in life and they just don't feel alive anymore. So that was 2014. I opened my business January 2014. And honestly, I haven't looked back a day since. It's been really amazing. Wow. I love that. I think that's, I think it's just really, it's really cool to hear that you transformed your life based off of how you were feeling and you took it upon yourself to say, Hey, like I need to make a change. And then you got educated and you have all this experience and now you get to help other people do it. And that's just such a beautiful, a beautiful thing. What do you recommend for people who are maybe listening to this and are in like are in the place that you were in before you made that transition? Like maybe they're burning the candle at both ends, maybe they're traveling majority of the weeks out of the year. Like, how do you help people kind of get out of that place, especially if they're in a rut or they might feel stuck? Yeah, I think. It is our society or maybe human nature that is so quick to look for the answer. So they're like, they come to me and they say, something must be wrong. I must have something wrong with my thyroid. I must have something, whatever. And we do detailed labs because A, I love lab work and what it shows us, but also B, I want to give them peace of mind. But most times at the end of the day, it comes down to something that has nothing to do with the lab work that they would have known if they had slowed down enough to really listen to their body. So I always ask people, if I had a magic button right here and I could change one thing about your lifestyle or your health, what would it be? And some people say, oh my goodness, I really, I haven't moved my body in in." five months, I really need some movement. And some people say, I've really got to cut the soda. It's not helping me. And some people say, I need more sleep. And some people say, I haven't seen my friends in a month, whatever. But everyone kind of knows. That's a big first step to trust your intuition and then to actually listen to what your body's telling you. I think you're right. I think a lot of people know. And I think it is, there is a intuition piece to things. But I also love data and I love testing and I love looking at biomarkers and making more informed decisions. But I think a lot of people overlook this intuitive aspect to it. And I also just wonder as well as a society in general, especially like Western society, if we have really just removed ourselves from being closer to our intuition, you know, like there's so many things that distract us now with like technology and screens and social media and all of these things that who even has time to really be like, okay, how am I actually feeling? What do I really feel like I need? The days are so busy that how do we create that space to be able to have that reflective moment? It is so hard. And it's something I think about all the time because just like you, I love all of this. I run a lot of labs on myself. I think it's a blessing and a curse to be able to order them because I can do it on myself too. 
I wear, right now I have an aura ring and a whoop, but I wear all kinds of different things from continuous glucose monitors to you name it, like everything. So I have all of this data, which I love telling me how my body's doing. And that in some ways makes it harder to do what people used to do 100 years ago, which is wake up and be like, how do I feel? Well, I don't know how I feel. I have to check aura or I have to check Uh, this or I have to check whatever first. There's so much amazing power of knowledge in that stuff, but we need to use it, I think, with caution. Caution might be too strong of a word, but with awareness that at the end of the day, the best technology out there is our intuition, and that just takes practice. Absolutely. I actually went through that a bit last summer with with the aura ring, like you're saying. So I got to a point where I was checking it every single morning when I would wake up and would kind of just be so obsessed with like HRV and deep sleep and REM sleep and all these things and trying to optimize it, you know, as you do. And then I would base my decisions based off of my metrics from the night before instead of how I was feeling. So if it said, Hey, like you should slow down today. Don't do any workouts. I I would like have a slower day. Or if it said like, you can go for it, like you're super like ready to go today, I would follow it. But it wasn't actually just how I felt. Like there were times when it would tell me to slow down, but I was like, I actually feel really good today. Like I could do a spin class, like, you know, or the opposite. Right. And so I actually took a month off last summer of the aura ring completely. And I put it on airplane mode, I think for like six weeks or five weeks or something because of that. And I was having like I don't know, data burnout. <laughs> like, yes. Uh, uh, I can so. really see that. And there are some people like me, I like data as a confirmation. So if I wake up and I know that I am just not feeling right to hit a super hardcore workout, and then I look at my aura ring and it's like, oh, you really need to rest. I'm like, oh, yes. Okay. Now I know I'm not just making it up. That's nice. But the reverse needs to be true. I need to wake up and say, I'm not feeling that hard workout and trust myself. Even if my aura says that you're ready to go, whatever, you can push it hard today. I need to trust myself. So I think that exercise that you did taking five or six weeks off, that's really amazing. I recommend that. Yeah. And honestly, it worked because now my relationship with it is like, I will check it. I honestly, I don't even check it every day at this point. Like it might be every other day. It's way more casual uh, because I just know, I know how I feel. I know like I need to get my steps in. I need to have enough water. I'm just not at this point where I need this like machine to tell me what to do. I don't know. It sounds silly, you know, but I think we just get so hooked on it. And yeah, like even for example, I have a family member who I think he has to reach 14,000 steps every single day. And when he comes to stay with us, it will be like 8 p.m. And he'll be like, oh, I got to go for a second walk because I'm at like 13,000 and I need another thousand or something. Yeah. Like that's the level of like degree that it's that intense. And so he has like, I think a Google watch. I don't know what the Google one is called, but it's just interesting when you become so wrapped up in hitting these metrics that it's like, are you even like living life anymore? I don't know. Yes. Are you tired of your hormones causing chaos in your life? Do you find yourself struggling to regulate your menstrual cycle, uncertain what supplements to take and when, or confused about the best workouts to do to maintain hormonal balance? Well, I have great news for you. I have developed a ebb and flow cycle guide, which is your ultimate solution to all of your hormonal problems. This personalized guide has been expertly crafted to address all your hormone-related issues, and it's also super easy to use. Why is it so effective? Because it's born out of personal experience and the desire to overcome irregular cycles myself. With my Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide, you'll discover a world of benefits that will transform your life. You get to say goodbye to uncertainty and confusion and say hello to a healthier, more balanced you. Inside this unbeatable guide, you'll find all the answers you need to start living in harmony with your menstrual cycle today. But that's not everything. As a special bonus, I also added in over 30 delicious, quick and easy recipes designed to help balance your hormones. 
With these recipes, you can take action right now and they'll help you on your journey to becoming more in sync with your menstrual cycle. There's different recipes for different phases as well as different supplements, workouts, and biohacks for each phase of the menstrual cycle. Don't let your hormone imbalances hold you back any longer. Trust me, I've been there and I wish I had this guide to help me when I was really struggling in the weeds of my hormonal chaos that I was going through. You can grab your copy of my guide right now in the podcast description or visit my website. It's super easy. It's right at the top for you to get and download today. Enjoy this episode and I will catch you on the next one. Absolutely. It's a whole delicate balance of the whole biohacking field, really the whole health field in general. How can we use these tools for good because they are good without taking them to the other side? Yeah, exactly. What are some other tools that you use to track your health? Oh, well, I will give you the lowest tech that is my favorite, and then I'll give you some fancier ones. Okay. Honestly, my favorite health tool that I use is a weekly Excel spreadsheet where I have my goals for the week. So I have not just the goals that you might think of each year, like business goals, revenue, whatever. I have that stuff too, but I also have goals on spending time with various family members because that sometimes gets thrown off my plate. I get, I have goals on, did I actually take a break this week? How many times did I get outside? How was my sleep score, for example? How many minutes did I spend on social media? All of this kind of stuff. How many books have I read? Just things that are important to me and that I know contribute to my overall health. And I review that every single week. So I do a little morning routine every morning. That helps me uh, focus every day. But then the goal review every week helps me really refocus. Oh, goodness, I didn't get outside as much as I wanted this week. That's really important to me. And I physiologically feel a difference. So I'm going to build that into my calendar this week. Or, oh shoot, I haven't spent time with my nieces this week. I want to do that. That little refocus on what's important to me each week makes a huge difference for me. I love that. That's so smart. I think it's so helpful to have like the goals written out like that. If it's like a checklist or a spreadsheet, I kind of do a little bit of the similar thing. Like I write little sticky notes and I kind of put them all over my house. So like in my, yeah, in my bathroom, because I'm just in my bathroom and I like see it. It's where I see the things, right? So I have like my five or six things I try to do every day. And then in my office, like on my desktop screen, I have sticky notes of like my career goals. And I just look at it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, like I was going to work on this one project today, but wait, my goal is actually this. So let's work towards that goal, you know? Absolutely. I have said many times that post-it notes are one of my favorite health tools because we need those visual cues. I will get the exact statistic wrong, but something like we have 60,000 thoughts per day. And even if you know what your number one goal is or what your number 10, top 10 goals are, you're competing with 60,000 other things. If out, If we don't have that visual reminder, it can get lost even if it is important to you. So I'm a big proponent of what you're saying. I'm going to add some more post-it notes based on some of the things you said. So thank you for that. Good. I love that. That's awesome. So what are some of the factors that you think people often miss regarding their health? And why do you think that they might be missed or kind of undervalued or underestimated? Yes. Well, I think the easy answer here is they miss stress management and coming from me Like I said, I've always been an achiever. I do have a lot of energy and I can survive off of less sleep or never taking a break or whatever. I can survive. I can't thrive, but I have convinced myself at many periods in my life that, you know, survival is okay for this month or this year or this season or this cycle or whatever. And that takes such a deep toll on our health when we're talking about adrenal health specifically, but really that bleeds into gut health, that bleeds into thyroid health, that bleeds into metabolic health. It's like all of our health, brain health, cardiovascular health, everything revolves around that. So very much not saying we have to eliminate stress. In fact, that's not even good for the human body. 
but we are not energizer bunnies that don't need to recharge ever. We actually do as humans, even high achieving humans, we need to tend to our stress management. uh, And that looks a little bit different for every single person. I love that. I love that you talked about that. I have been actually talking about stress a lot on my podcast lately, and I've just come out of a stressful period from like multiple months, to be honest, not just like a, oh, I've had a stressful day, multiple months. And I, yeah, anyway, I did multiple things to claw my way out of it. How do you think that, I mean, there's so many ways to take this, but how do you think stress impacts our health like long-term? Like when does it get to a point where, okay, this is the average amount of stress that we can have, you know, it's okay. I can manage it. I'm still sleeping well. I still have energy, but like, when does it get to a point where we're stressing too much and then we actually need to do something about it? Like, how do you kind of define that? It's really hard. I wish I had a very precise measurement. Like you can take this many units of stress over your lifetime and then it's (laughs) too much or whatever. I don't. I mean, hopefully somewhere someday we'll be able to measure that. But right now, I think we have to look for various bodily cues. So like you said, one day of stress, it's not bad. I don't want anyone listening to panic and think, oh my gosh, I had a stressful day yesterday, I'm in trouble. No, absolutely not. It's really that unremitting stress for a a continuous period of time. Usually for people that tends to be like two, three, four months of high level stress or two, three, four years of kind of like what people would consider mid-grade stress. Like I might be raising a couple of toddlers and one of them has health issues or something like that. That's never like, oh my gosh, this one day was the problem, but it's these couple of years are the problem. And people will start noticing different things. So something as simple as my hair is thinning or my eyebrows might be thinning, or my skin might be thinning, like I I get a cut and it doesn't heal, or I'm having temperature control issues, or I'm having some really, really strong sugar cravings. Like many people will think, oh, cookies are tasty. Of course I want cookies. That's not what I'm talking about, but like actual cravings all the time, or not all the time, but regularly throughout the day or week. Maybe some menstrual irregularities if you're still cycling, if you have period changes or absent periods, maybe some inability to gain muscle, even if you're working out, maybe some snoring a lot of people will experience, maybe some feelings of kind of apathy, even if you objectively like your life and your job and your family and all that kind of stuff, you just start feeling like, blah all through the day and like you're not really motivated. All of these are signs that your adrenals are really telling you you need a little break. Yeah, I love that. I love that you said that. For me, I could tell it was to a point that I had to do something more about it was when I was living for my vacations. So yeah, I had I had a vacation in August for a week, and then I had another one at the beginning of October. And I was like, that's my light at the end of the tunnel. I'm just going to keep going until my vacation. Then my vacation would come. I would feel so much better on vacation, at the beach, whatever. Then I'd come back, and then I'd be like, okay, my next vacation is in October. And that's when that happened, I was like, oh, this is not good. Like, I'm not in a good place mentally if all I'm thinking about is how I don't want to be where I am right now. And it was like, it was honestly a very hard thing to realize. It was very sobering because then I had to look at myself and my career and my business and be like, okay, like I need to make a change. This isn't sustainable. I'm a single human. Also, I'm a woman and this is impacting my menstrual cycle. So this is not cool anymore, you know? But I, I found it hard and I'm sure you relate to this as well as someone who runs your own practice. Like I find it hard because society is very like go, go, go. And the harder you work, the better. And you work on weekends, like, wow, good for you. Like, that's so great. You're going to be so successful and you're this badass entrepreneur, like go, go, go. You know, it's very masculine. But the thing is, I found like 
being in that masculine energy for so long just led me to burnout. And now I'm like, okay, how do I be successful, but be more in my feminine, slower, more balanced energy? Are you looking for a way to nourish your body while reaping the benefits of prolonged fasting without the hassle? Look no further than the prolonged five-day fast. We get it. You want the health benefits of fasting, but life gets in the way. That's where Prolon steps in as the solution. This groundbreaking nutrition technology has been meticulously designed and clinically tested by 14 global universities. It provides your body with the incredible cellular, metabolic, and emotional advantages of prolonged fasting, all while enjoying real food. Here's the beauty of it. Prolon offers transformation in five-day cycles. Just five days on and 25 days off, and you'll start experiencing rejuvenation, longevity, and a path to healthier living. What makes Prolon truly exceptional is that the optimal results are achieved with three consecutive cycles. That's where the magic happens. Prolon is even patented for its incredible effects on healthy aging, triggering cellular rejuvenation and autophagy, the body's natural process for cellular self-cleansing. But it's not just about aging gracefully. With Prolon, you can look forward to fat-focused weight loss, an improved sense of well-being, and a transformed relationship with food, which is really important. And if you're worried about your skin showing the signs of time, fear not. In just three cycles of Prolon, you can enjoy healthier, younger-looking skin with reduced fine lines and wrinkles. Ready to take charge and try it today? I definitely recommend you do so. You can follow the link in my show notes or on my website to try it yourself and use my discount code biohackingbrittany to get a discount at checkout. So that is the Prolon 5-Day Fast. I really recommend it. I've done it once and I'm going to do it a couple more times coming up in the next few months just to get the most benefits. And I hope you do as well. I could not relate to you more. Thank you for sharing that. I have definitely been in the place where I'm living for my vacations. And of course, there's nothing wrong with liking your vacations and looking forward to them. But if you're living for them and it feels like light at the end of the tunnel, that's a really good sign. And like you said, it's hard when you're running your own practice and hard in many other industries as well, because I love what I do. I care so much about helping people. And if you say, do you want to help this extra person? Do you want to take this extra presentation? Do you want whatever? The answer is always yes. But the accumulation of all of it is sometimes too much. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, we have this really easy measurement tool, which is money. And so I can tell myself, oh, Megan, you did better this year because you made more money. And that leads me to always want to grow based on revenue, even if money is not that motivating to me. It's just that it's an easy measurement tool. So that's why I do this weekly goal thing where business goals are only a small portion because if I only let myself measure my success based on money or whatever societal standards any other person would thrust at me, then I will work myself into the ground 100% of the time because I'm a goal getter. I like that. I thrive on that. So having some of these other goals, literally tracking, like, did I get free time this week? That helps me a little bit, but I, I certainly don't have the magic answer. It's something that I'm constantly working with myself all the time. I love that. I think that's like such a good way to reframe it. And I'm actually going to steal that and do that. Like, it's not just, it's like not just your goals, it's actually just another success metric. And I think that's so interesting. So, like, if you drink, you know, however much water you want to drink every day and you do it for a week, that was a successful week for that, you know? And so, yeah, I love that. I just think, like you said, like we get so wrapped up in revenue and how much you're making and, you know, these very easy things to measure, but they really, <laughs> It's not at all a reflection of how you are physically or mentally or emotionally. Yeah. And the other part with that too is like, oh, I made more money in my business next this year. So let me just keep going because obviously what I'm doing is working. But then it's like, oh, wait a minute. My mental health is terrible and yeah. I haven't seen my friends in three months. 
oh, okay. So like these other success metrics are just like not even on the radar anymore. And it's hard. This is like not the only conversation I've had about this. There's so many women and so many people in general who are struggling with like, how do I keep a relative, like optimal, healthy level, but also go after my dreams? And I don't know. I I agree. There's no easy answer for it. I so wish there were. I honestly (laughs) think I, I reframe it to myself all the time. I get to be continuously aware because I am not the type of person who is just going to be content working one hour a week or something like that. That's just not the way that I'm driven or I'm wired. But at the same time, I don't want to burn myself into the ground. I've been there, done that way too many times, more times than I care to admit. And that is not my priority anymore. So how do I continuously stay at 80% or whatever percent you want to give to yourself and still motivate myself and still do the things that I like to do in business without tipping over that edge of 110%. And I think, like I said, I reframe it to myself. I get to stay continuously aware. There's not ever going to be a number of hours that I can work or a certain number of clients only that I can see or whatever. There's not an easy measurement. I just get to stay continuously aware. And it goes back to the intuition that we talked about at the beginning. I know when I'm pushing too hard. I really do. I I sometimes try to not admit it to myself, but I know if I tap into that intuition that it's too much. And so that practice of listening to your body despite what your aura ring says or whatever, that helps in terms of burnout as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Do you have any nutrition tips or maybe foods that you think can positively impact stress that you typically recommend? Absolutely. So first and foremost is magnesium. Magnesium must be one of my favorite supplements slash nutrients because it is very quickly depleted in times of stress, in times of exercise, in so many different things. Magnesium is so essential for many aspects of our body's functioning. And so I like to test people's magnesium. The red blood cell magnesium, not the serum magnesium, isn't uh, quite as telling. But I think in the absence of testing, if we don't do testing for some reason, almost everyone feels better with a focus on magnesium. So that can come from dark leafy greens. It can come from chocolate. It can come from pumpkin seeds. All of those are foods that I crave regularly. So I think probably it's my body's way of getting more magnesium. And then it can come from supplement form as well. You want to be careful of the format because some can be a little rough on the digestive system and others cross the blood-brain barrier better. But magnesium is going to be one. Really focusing on good quality nourishment for the body is essential in times of stress. So what do I mean by nourishment? I actually mean we need all of the macronutrients and all of the micronutrients. I don't think in times of stress that it's a good thing for your body to do anything extreme. So any, you know, I think fasting is a wonderful tool, but really detail or really deep fasts during times of extreme stress, not recommended. Really strict macronutrient cutoffs in times of stress, not recommended. Our body actually needs protein, fat, and carbohydrates all in the right types or or formats or quality, our body needs micronutrients. So what do people do when they get stressed? They deprioritize food and nutrition and they end up just, you know, oh, I'm just going to grab a protein bar. I haven't exercised for two weeks, so I probably don't need that many calories anyway or something like that. That's suboptimal in times of stress. Your body feeling like it doesn't have the macro and micronutrients it needs to thrive is an additional source of stress. So really focusing on truly nourishing foods, whole foods, a variety of foods, lots of deep colors, adequate protein is something that almost all of my clients are not getting, especially those who are 
really heavily stressed and good quality, healthy fats as well. Fats are essential for our brain. And then unfortunately, staying away from too many of the things that make us feel good in the moment, but not in the long run. So this is too much alcohol, caffeine, sugar, processed food, things like that. Those are all stressors on your body. And if we think about even something like alcohol, which can, uh, well, not can, does alter neurotransmitters in your body, that's why it feels good right in the moment. But that alteration when your body is already jittery, already under stress can just spiral the problem even deeper. My next partner I want to talk about is Athletic Greens. So I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every single day. And I first gave AG1 a try when I was traveling to Costa Rica. I really wanted something to support my gut health, boost my energy, keep my immune system in check, and really just support me while I was traveling and not home. I quickly fell in love with it. And now that I'm back in Canada, I still take it every single day. And I take it in the morning before I have any type of coffee. Typically, it's like the first thing I have in the morning. And it makes me feel just fantastic. I feel like I'm starting my day off on the right foot. I feel like I'm covering all of my nutrition needs right from the get-go, which is super important and such a healthier way to start than just having coffee on an empty stomach right away. So I just, I'm just obsessed with taking it. And if you want to take ownership of your health, today is a good time to start. Athletic Greens is giving you a free, wow, one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So those are the same travel packs that I took when I was flying. Go to athleticgreens.com slash biohacking with Brittany. That's athleticgreens.com slash biohacking with Brittany to check it out today. It's also linked in my show notes and on my website everywhere. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, I think there are so many nutrients that can really be supportive, like you said. And again, it goes back to like testing as well to see if you are deficient or like to see what your levels are at. Thankfully, now there are so many at home tests that make that actually super easy. So we don't have to. I'm in Canada and it can be pretty hard sometimes to get the test that you want to get. So if you can go privately, it's just way better. But yeah, it's interesting because I don't I don't think a lot of people would necessarily think, oh, stress management equals diet, like equals healthier nutrition. Like I think the first general recommendation someone would make would be like, rest more, get better sleep. Yeah. Are you exercising? Are you over exercising? Like, don't work as much. But it's like, no, let's actually look at the different nutrients that are going on and how you might be out of balance on a micro level, which is obviously impacting everything. And I, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. It's really thinking about stress as a whole. I call it a bucket. It's technically called allostatic load, the amount of stress your body is under from all kinds of different factors. So, There are some things we can't directly control. Maybe you live right now in a polluted area and hopefully you have a filter inside, but you have to step outside and you breathe pollution, whatever. That's a little stress on your body. Maybe you can't control. You're in a a very stressful time. You have an ailing parent or something like that. There are factors that we can't control, but then let's take all those other factors that you can control how much time you're taking out for yourself, if you're over or under exercising your nutrition, your stress management practices like meditation, journaling, rest, et cetera. And let's just see which lever you can pull. And again, that varies based on the client. Some people are like, look, I am not going to make the time right now to have a hobby, but can I eat more greens? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Let's figure out what you can do. We don't have to be perfect and can't be perfect in all of this stuff, but it all makes a difference. Yeah, it does all make a difference. Like the healthy habits make a difference. The correct micronutrients make a difference. And I know you kind of talk about this in general with your idea of like back to the basics. So what do you mean back to the basics? Because I think I know what you mean, but I think a lot of people actually don't love hearing about back to the basics because it's not very like, it's not very like sexy, right? You're like, oh, yes. get, out, get outside. And they're like, they roll their eyes like, okay, I've heard this a million times, you know? 
I totally know. And if I wanted to grow my business quicker and sacrifice my integrity, I would stop hammering home the basics so much because every single person knows that drinking water is helpful, that eating more vegetables is helpful, that getting outside is helpful. Like people know this, but people don't do this. Common knowledge is not common practice. And I am someone who loves supplements and loves all the fancy stuff and whatever. But at the end of the day, there's no supplement or magic practice that's going to do what drinking water and getting outside and eating some vegetables is going to do. Those basics are basics for a reason. It's like people say it's a cliche for a reason because it's true. The basics are foundational. We truly do need to master this. So a lot of times, when new clients come to me and we have the very first session and we're we're setting some goals. I like to do only a couple of goals each session. They think it's going to be something super challenging and like they've never heard it before. But I'll often say like, ooh, I noticed on your intake form that you eat zero vegetables per day. Are there any vegetables you're interested in including or something like that? And they're like, oh, come on. I can feel their eye roll even Mm -hmm. if they don't give it to me. But this stuff matters. It really does. It really does. And I, like you said, like, I don't think you can go ahead and buy some sort of longevity supplement that is supposed to help you age backwards if you're not exercising, sleeping well, managing stress, getting outdoors, you know, like these basic things. But I, I agree with you again. Like, I just think so many people want a quick fix, whether it's a pharmaceutical or a supplement. We love this idea yes. of like this magic pill. And people think like they criticize that with pharmaceuticals, but actually like we take that same approach with supplements all of the time of like, oh, this is like this new thing and wow, okay, now I'm going to take this and then I don't have to worry about this symptom anymore because this single little supplement is going to solve it. Like, no, come on. (laughs) That's right. I think we earn the privilege to experiment with some of this fancier stuff once we have the basics down. And if you want to just do the basics and not the fancy stuff, that's cool too, but it doesn't go the other way. You can't do the fancy stuff without the basics. Why do you think people struggle so much with the basics though? Like I experienced this in my family as well. So my dad will, you know, he's in his sixties, he'll come to me for health advice. And my health advice is honestly like the basics for him. And he struggles so much with it. And I'm like, just, it should just be a lifestyle, but so many people just really struggle. Like, why do you think that is? Well, I have several different hypotheses. One, the little more skeptical one is the food industry is really not working in our favor. So I know you and and probably the audience have heard stories about various food manufacturers literally trying to manufacture human taste buds or clones of human taste buds to see which foods will light them up more or create this hyper palatability response. And when that's what you've been eating, foods that have been engineered to excite your taste buds, when that's what you've been eating for so long, of course water doesn't taste good. Of course broccoli or chicken doesn't taste good or whatever. You've been eating Cheetos all your life and that stuff is designed to give you a specific reaction. So uh, the skeptical side of me says it's that. The medium side of me says that it is always going to be, I think we have a a hunger for continuous improvement. And we feel that the world of technology, of health, of medicine is advancing. And so people tend to think, well, water and getting outside, that's like what they did to get healthy in 1800. There must be something better today. And so that's kind of like a little bit more optimistic. And then the last side, the compassionate side of me says, hey, people are dealing with a lot of different priorities and it is easier to take a pill than it is to eat three healthy meals per day. And so they feel that they don't have capacity and our, your and I job, your and my job as practitioners is to help them realize that their priorities must be their health and help them free up some space in other ways. But the compassionate side would say, honestly, it's hard when you're not in the habit. It's easier for you and I because we've been doing it consistently for a long time, but any change is hard. Yeah, it is. It is hard. It is. 
yeah, it's so cliche, but it is a journey. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it really is. Like, I started my, you know, holistic health and wellness journey as a teenager because I went through, I had some pretty significant symptoms that I wanted to heal. And even since being in it since then, like I still went through burnout this past summer and had to figure that out. So it's not like it's, oh, you suddenly start to be healthier and nothing is ever going to come up again and, you know, everything is perfect. It's just a journey. Like you go through times where you're healthier and things are more in balance. And then you go through times when there's a new symptom or condition and then you have to like adjust and you have to learn again and learn more and just be humble about it. My theories are kind of similar. Like I think that people don't want to put in the work. <laughs> I think it's from what I've heard in the conversations I've had, I think that people just don't want to do the work. Like it's so easy to sit down after work, put Netflix on and order Uber Eats from your couch. Like you don't even really have to move. Right. Yeah. So what do you mean? I'm going to make my own dinner with organic produce. <laughs> and like, I'm going to go for a walk after dinner because it lowers my blood sugar. Like get out. There's a new episode of the bachelor on like, what are you talking about? You know? <laughs> and like, so I, you know, you're asking people to do something that is harder than how comfortable society is now. And that's why it feels like an uphill battle for people who haven't made it part of their lifestyle. So yeah, it's a, it's tough, but I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of sound like a grandmother, but I embrace this grandmother aspect of me. I'm fearful of what's going to happen when all kinds of technology makes everything even easier than it is now. So like one example I use is I love reading and I love reading books because I like doing it in the moment, but I also love the knowledge I get. And I'm terrified that in years to come, you're going to be able to buy the book to be implanted in your brain. And then poof, all of a sudden, you know, this stuff, I'm like, no, that takes away the process. And when all this stuff is getting easier and easier and easier, you're right. We are not, we as society are not willing to do the work for anything, but that's scary because work is, it's not just the destination, but the actual act of getting yourself up off the couch and going for that walk that creates so much self-efficacy and so much self-belief and confidence, like the actual doing is valuable, not just the outcome. Absolutely. Yeah. There, there are a lot of consequences that come from comfort. And yeah. maybe you feel it in that moment when you like order that pizza again. Not that I'm shaming pizza. Pizza is great. But, or maybe you feel it 10 years later when you look back and you're like, oh, wow, like I actually came off the bandwagon of exercising for so long and, and now look where I'm at. And yeah, I think you're right. Like that reading thing is scary too, because I love reading as well. And the reason I love reading is because it puts me into my parasympathetic mode and yeah. it's like a cozy, calming activity that is not looking at screens. Like I don't use any of those Kindles or anything like that. I like having a physical book that I'm Ew. you know, like escaping into. And then, yeah, I, yeah. So I, I get it. And it feels kind of like an upward battle with all of these comforts coming. And like, what are we even supposed to do in, yeah, to, to kind of mitigate them? I don't know. I think we're all going to have to figure it out together, but I, I don't have an easy answer to that one. I'll be following you and we can share ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of like what we're doing right now in terms of natural healthy habits, that type of thing. And I think it's just going to require more self-discipline. And I will say like the earlier you start these habits, the easier it is. Like 100%. <laughs> like if, you know, I started going to the gym and working out at 16, if I were to start today, I would just be like so confused on like what to do, where to go. I would feel embarrassed, like all of these things. So the sooner you get going, the better. And there's so many people who can help, you know? Anyway, it's my it's my little me standing on my soapbox. <laughs> no, I today. totally agree. I get really excited. I don't have a ton of 
college age or early 20 clients. But when I do, I get really excited because I'm like, yes, we're going to reach your goals right now. But also you're not going to have to hire me or someone like me for the next eight decades. Like that's really huge to be learning it. And on the flip side, if someone listening is in their 60s or 70s or 80s or 90s or 100s or however old, like now is better than never. There's a Chinese proverb that I love. I have a little coaster of it that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So if you're hearing this and it's late, today's the best time. I love that. Oh, that's such a, yeah, that's so encouraging because I agree with you. Yeah. It would have been great to start back then, but today is a great day as well. It's yes. like you, whatever the habit is, whatever it needs to be. I just really want to encourage people that like it is a journey and you have control, right? Like you actually get to decide which some people don't like that, but I actually love that because that's on me then. And so I get to decide how healthy I am and I get to show up for myself, but I'm also very internally motivated. So maybe that's why, you know how like some people are externally motivated and some people are internally motivated. I do. And I also, I, I was born this way. My parents would tell you I was intrinsically motivated from the time I was a child. And I consider that a giant gift. I'm so grateful. And I think that people who are not born this way, they can still develop it. It just takes practice. So I have a lot of people be like, oh, well, I'm not that way naturally. So I'm in trouble. It's not that. We can all learn. We all have strengths and challenges and we can all learn motivation. And in fact, it doesn't even have to be motivation. Habit creates motivation. So if you don't feel motivated to do something, maybe just commit to making it a habit, then you don't need the motivation. Yeah. I love that. That's such a good way to look at it. I think, yeah, I just like, I think there's so much that we can do and there's so many communities and leaders in this space as well that you can connect to like yourself. Right. So that's the beautiful thing with social media. Like social media definitely has some darkness and negative sides to it. But the best thing is you get to just put this podcast episode on for an hour and be like, wow, I needed to hear this about stress. I needed to hear this about nutrition. And now you're motivated in your own personal life and we've never met, you know? And I just think that's so cool. So for me, myself, like I have a lot of online communities that I plug into every day to just support me on my own journey. And I think I think we're moving there more as a society as well. But yeah, I just want to encourage people to keep going. Absolutely. I love that message. Yes. So if people want to work with you and they really want to take that next step on their health and nutrition journey, how can they do that? Yes. Well, they can check out my website, which is thelionshare.org. It's L-Y-O-N-S and then share S-H-A-R-E dot org. And I have lots of things on there. The best compliment that I hear is people say, oh, I feel like I kind of know you and your philosophy from your website. So head over there and just check out some of the free stuff and blog posts and stuff like that. And you'll get a feel for whether I'm right for you or not. And then social media wise, I'm most active on Instagram, which is at the lion share. Amazing. Okay. I will link that in the show notes and put it on my website as well. So everyone can find you super easily. And thank you so much for coming on my podcast today. This was awesome. And I just love chatting with you. I feel like we have so much in common. This was so easy. I agree. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate all of the insights that you gave as well. Thanks for listening to another episode of biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.